Okay. E collars, electric collars, electric stimulation collars, uh, stimulant collars, whatever you want to call them. Here it goes. So I want to start the video um, just by saying that I've done a couple of like videos that are a little bit of a mix take out of using e-collars and things like that. Uh, so the majority of people that have seen my videos, you know my stance on that, uh, on how on people using them and things like that. Um, so I want to start the video um, because it's going to be I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent during it. Um, it's going to sound like I'm defending sometimes or whatever it may be, okay? But let me explain. Um, so, so I want to start off with just but make it clear, clear, okay? Just to clarify, I do not use electric collars in any form, okay? So that's whether it's a shock collar, whether it's a spray collar, uh, or anything like that. The only collar I may use is a vibration collar. If someone wants to ask me about vibration collar and why and when I would use it, I am more than happy to have a discussion with you about it. Um, but I don't use a vibration collar as a punishment, okay? So, but anyone out there, if you're a trainer, if you're just somebody who's interested, please ask me, I will go through that. Um, however, um, I don't use e-collars as a, as a whole, okay? so. I'm not going to be defending anything, but I'm not going to be taking the MIG. I'm going to use a few examples, okay, and I'm going to get people to start thinking outside the box. So I'm talking about people that are against e-collars, and I'm also going to be talking to people who use e-collars. And I want to try and get you thinking about a few little subjects on the use of them, okay, just to try and get you to kind of think about things a little bit better, um, whether you're a trainer, whether you're experienced, whether you're not. Hopefully you take something away from this video. Okay, guys, so here we go. So one of the first things that um, uh, someone who is against an e-collar would say, um, whenever anyone mentions them, brings them up, advises them or anything like that, is they're cruel. Okay, so <laughs> not, not actually strictly true. Okay, they can be cruel, um, but then so can a flat normal collar on your dog. Uh, or a harness, or anything like that, or a gentle leader. Um, any piece of equipment you use can be cruel. So uh, how many times have you seen a dog dragging their owner down the street by their collar? Okay, the owner's not doing anything about it, the dog's panting and choking, um, although the dog is an idiot, if they backed off a little bit, it wouldn't happen, but we all know this does happen. Um, but would, they, would you not class that as cruel? Effectively, you're choking your dog. So technically, you should just let them off a lead. So... Not necessarily cruel, okay? Um, and you're going to be a bit, whoa, hang on a minute, how is he saying it's not cruel? Um, the rest of the section on, on this video might explain that a little bit better than what I'm just about to say now. So uh, cruelty is in the high, eye of the beholder, okay? So you'll have somebody who will say, um, shouting at your dog is cruel. Uh, somebody who will say, uh, feeding your dog once a day is cruel. Someone will say, oh, Walking your dog is cruel. Um, it really depends on the eye of the beholder. Now, of course, e-collars uh, have got this uh, reputation of being very barbaric tools, uh, along with a lot of other stuff. Um, but I'm going to go through the uh, how to use them and things like that in a bit. And hopefully that will clarify what I'm trying to talk to you about when I'm saying they're not necessarily cruel. Okay, guys, it's, everything can be cruel if used incorrectly. One of the things that um, I often get into a debate with uh, certain people with when they're pro collar, okay, so these are people that will use them uh, and they're happy to use them, things like that. Um, 
is a lot of people will go on there and they'll say things, you know, uh, against the uh, the e-collars saying, you know, they hurt the dogs and it's cruel, it's electrocution and things like that. Um, and the the pro collar users, okay, they always come back with the same thing. Only cheap ones hurt the dog. Rubbish. Absolute nonsense. Stop talking rubbish. You've clearly only been taught a certain way, okay, um, which I'm glad because you're not using something that's going to really excruciatingly hurt the dog. OK, so I'm happy about this. This is a good thing that you don't do that. And then you've got that in your mind. OK, however, cheap it's not nothing to do with how expensive they are. Dogtra is one of the top leading brands of uh, e-collars. And some of their e-collars are like 200 quid upwards. OK, and they go from levels one, which is you can not hardly feel anything, up to about two, 250, some of them I've seen. OK, now I've held one of these e-collars in my hand at 150, I believe. And let me tell you now, yes, it does bloody hurt. So another uh, another section about people who are against the, the e-collar, um, it electrocutes the dog. OK, so I think everyone's got in their mind, you know, when uh, when someone uses one of these e-collars, they, they push a button and then you can see the dog's bones because it goes like an X-ray, like in a cartoon. Um, so it's like just the hair stands up and, you know, smoke comes out the ears and things like that. Actually, not the case. Um, it's not really an electrical. Well, it is an electrical current. I was just about to say it's not an electrical current. It is an electrical current, but it isn't an electrocution, if that makes any sense. You know how you would touch a car door uh, and you'd get a zap? OK, so it's more like a static sort of charge, if I could, exp in a certain sort of way. So electric, uh, um, electric static shock is still an electric shock. OK, but it's not an electrocution, if that makes sense. OK, guys, so don't think if someone's using it, they're not electrocuting their dog in that sort of sense. OK, so uh, this one comes from the pro uh, electric collar users. Uh, it doesn't harm your dog in any way. Um, if used correctly, that's the that's the ten general gist that you get from it. Well, it it does. Okay, and the reason it does is not necessarily you're you're causing your dog extreme pain, um, but you are causing some form of discomfort, um, whether that's physically or mentally. Because if you wasn't, then the behaviour you're trying to stop by using this collar wouldn't stop. Rule, you know, it's it's not rule. Sorry, it's uh, it's it's dog training one hundred and one. In order for a behaviour to reduce, you must use a punishment. And a punishment must be something that is negative in a way that it will reduce the dog's behavior. Okay, now this could be something as simple as withholding a tree, okay? So I'm not talking about punishment as in hitting and, and uh, extreme punishments, but by using an e-collar, you are punishing your dog, in which case you are causing a discomfort, which means you are harming the dog in a roundabout way. Now this is a, a, a more of a defense thing, um, for people like myself, um, now this tends to be um, this tends to be focused on um, women. Okay, so this this is a this is a common term that is fired across at women. Uh, you can see the, the look on my face; it starts to irritate me. But it also gets um, it also gets fired across to to some men, um, and you'll tend to find that you'll link this this saying. I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about in a minute. That you'll link this saying to anything to anybody that would have any form of compassion. Okay, so I'm talking about um, someone that wouldn't kill a, a kill a spider and they'd rather put it out the window. I'm talking about vegans, I'm talking about vegetarians, uh, pescatarians, I'm talking about animal rights activists, I'm talking about people who don't like hunting. Um, anybody like that, you're always called a similar sort of thing, like you're a tree hugger, you're, a, you're, a, you're you know, whatever it may be, okay? Now, in the dog world, when if you're against something like a an e collar, you're automatically a fluffy trainer. Okay, um, so as I said, this is normally fired at women, uh, and, and the reason it's fired at women is because women tend to have show more compassion than men do. Uh, men must be men. Okay, so let me tell you now. Um, as you can see, skinhead, I'm covered in tattoos. Um, I've done boxing. I've done kickboxing. Um, I'm. I've got a few little championships behind my belt in kickboxing and karate. Um, you know, I wouldn't class myself as a fluffy person. I'm also, I also eat a vegan lifestyle as well. Again, I wouldn't class myself a fluffy person. It's just that because I've got compassion, somehow I'm fluffy. 
um, because I don't want to use an e-collar. So fluffy trainers, okay? You keep being fluffy. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with being fluffy as long as you know what you're doing. Okay, so even a fluffy trainer can get things wrong and they're rubbish, as well as a trainer that's going to use abusive techniques. Um, again, I'm not saying that e collar is an abusive technique. Um, however, just because somebody doesn't want to use an e collar, don't call them a fluffy trainer. It's just they probably studied more about dog behavior than you have. Now, this one is in defense of pro. Um, e-collar users okay so whenever someone says they use an e-collar and it's happened on my post a few times um and and the person i'm thinking of is probably going to comment on this video at some stage i'm sure he will um which is fine okay because that's what this post is about it's about opening um, a debate and and, and, a, and an idea of talking to each other about things so um this this particular guy that i'm thinking of i'm not going to name his name i'm sure he's going to know who he, who he is um he, he tends to come on my posts quite often if I say anything against an e-collar, okay? Which is fine. That's what my posts are for. Um, and me and him disagree on the use of them, and that's fine as well. We are allowed to disagree with each other, but we have a healthy conversation about it, okay? Which is fine. <clears throat> we can't ever agree to disagree. But a lot of people will jump on and they will call him cruel, and uh, a lot of people say the same thing. You don't know how to train a dog, okay? So that's not, that's not true. He's using a tool that we don't agree with. Okay, but that doesn't mean he doesn't know how to train a dog. It's just the tool you're disagreeing with. So you've got a, 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 mor um, a moral compass issue with someone who trains a dog using an e-collar. Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean they don't know how to train a dog because, yeah, you can stop certain behaviours by using an e-collar, but a lot of behaviours, uh, a lot of the training that you can see in some of these dogs actually is really, really good and you're not going to get that from an e-collar. Okay, so yes, they do know how to train dogs, but we just disagree on the methods of training. Brainwashed. Now, this this is for everybody. Okay, so whether you're pro or you're against uh, the use of e-collars, this is really for everybody. Now, the reason it's for everybody is because I think we can all be a little bit brainwashed. We tend to pick um, a certain type of training method and we run with it, um, regardless of regardless of how we feel. Not maybe not necessarily how we feel about it, but we, we tend to run with it because we're told this is the right way of doing it. Now, this could be anything. Um, this can be ultra force free. I will never do anything to upset my dog to a person who will basically look at their dog and go, you will do as you're bloody well told. Um, so you can all be brainwashed. OK, we only need to we only need to have a, a you know, throw a coin at the general public and ask them what they think of um, the small Mexican guy. That's on TV, yeah? A small Mexican guy. Um, so, many people that, that, you know, they worship the ground he works on. And we all know that I don't particularly like him. And uh, um, some of the things some of the things he says, I agree with, completely agree with. And some of the things he does, I agree with. And, and it works really, really well. But the majority of it, I don't. Okay, so we can all be a little bit brainwashed. Now, if um, we, we tend to fire off um, brainwashed towards the pro um e-collar users okay because they've been trained by the greatest in the world and the champion of this and that and the other so because they've been trained under these people that are supposed to be the real top of their fields uh they just think that is the right way of doing it okay um i was exactly the same exactly the same so i learn i learn um certain training methods that i don't use now okay and i thought that was the way of doing it and i would look at fluffy fluffy trainers i would look at fluffy trainers and go oh that'd be so pathetic okay uh but i'm gonna get into that in the next session so when we're uh talking to each other let's not throw this around your brainwash your brainwashed because we all are a little bit because if we weren't we wouldn't learn okay so we listen to certain things and we make up our own judgment and we go that way um so whether you're force free or whether you're do as you're told uh balanced whatever you want at lima there's so many terms out there does my head in gives me a headache um we're all a little brainwashed and we've all got our own beliefs. That's kind of what brainwash means, okay? However, this goes to everybody, and this includes myself because sometimes I can be a little bit, now nah, shut up, mate, you know what we're talking about. Um, we all need to be a little bit more open um, to learning new things, okay? Um, again, I've got a bit of experience with all of it, really, um, which I'm going to talk to you about after. But open your mind a little bit, listen. Listen to what the person's trying to say. Okay, if you can't explain it 
what your side of it, it doesn't matter what side you are if you can't explain your side of it properly or very well especially in text text is the worst then either phone each other have a video debate or get someone in from your type of training methods and get them to explain it okay so just so you don't sound militant because you know, I, I've done the e-collars before. I, I, I've had so much abuse from people, especially from Americans. Um, basically, you don't know what you're talking about. You ain't got a clue, blah, blah, blah. Because everybody uses one over there for some some reason. They can't seem to train a dog without one. Um, but then you've got the other side of it where you've got the force-free trainers who will then jump onto e-collar people and like, you don't know what you're doing, blah, 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 like that. You sound mental, okay? And no one's going to listen to you because you're just, you're just mental. And this goes in for everything. So it doesn't matter if it's training, whether it's uh, moral issues in the world, your politics, um, your eating habits. It makes no difference. If you come across really aggressive, most people won't listen to you. So if you want to educate, educate. Talk, don't shout. It's a saying that I like to use. Okay, final bit then, guys. Um, why I don't use them. Okay, so why don't I use them? So let me, I'll start off by um, showing you, Joe. Um, I'll start off by showing you, uh, or telling you, sorry, just a little bit about my history. Okay, not too much, because I don't want to bore you to death. So I trained, I started in my field nearly 13 years ago. Um, I started in my field nearly 13 years ago. And, um, oi, back it in. Sorry, they're on a rumble while I'm trying to do my video. Joey, chili. That's enough. That's it. Good boys. Well done. Okay. So sorry about that. Little earthquake going on. Okay. So um, I started off training in um, a pack theory based training place. Okay. So it was all about pack mentality, wolf, and this, that, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Um, which obviously the majority of us know now it's flawed. Okay. That's not the debate. We're not going to have that debate. We're not getting into that. Um, but part of this training, I used all of the aversives you could possibly think of, which we would use in this country. So I used water bottles, I used spray um, spray collars, I used e-collars, I used all sorts. Okay? I know how to use them. Um, admittedly, the e-collar side of things, I used them, well, I didn't use them. I was shown how to use them very incorrectly. Um... But then I learned how to use them properly later on, um, and I'm still not using them, okay? So, um, you know, I was taught you put an e-collar on a dog, uh, you turn it up when they do something you don't want them to do, like sheep chasing, for instance, and you let them have it, okay? Um, and then they'll stop. That's kind of how it was, okay? Um, and then, obviously, I learned later on, it's all about conditioning. You condition the dog to a very, very small um, stimulant and, and so on and so on and so on, Okay? So I know how to use them. So again, I've said this a million times before anybody jumps down my throat. Okay, so if you're a pro e-collar person, you can't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about because I do. Um, and if you're against e-collars, okay, you're going to probably be sitting there going, oh my God, he's done this. Yes, I have. Okay, but that just makes me even more of a person that you should be talking to about because I know how to use them. However, like I just said, I don't use them anymore. Okay, and I won't ever use them again. The reason for it is because I've figured out ways of training a dog without using them. Sometimes they take a bit longer, admittedly, and everyone wants a quick fix, and that's a shame in this society. Um, if you want a quick fix because you haven't got time, then you probably shouldn't have a dog because you haven't got time. Okay? The majority of your dog behaviours are caused by us in the first place um, because of the way we treat dogs. Uh, we treat them like babies rather than dogs, okay? So a lot of the behaviours we, we cause ourselves anyway, okay? But like I said, everybody wants a quick fix nowadays, and the e-collar is a quick fix. Um, however, it doesn't necessarily train the dog, so I don't use them. So some examples of where e-collars have gone wrong. Um, so a lot of people I know who are pro e-collar are against what I'm just about to say to you now, which is, rem uh, sorry, not remote, um, remoteless or bark-activated collars. Okay, so I'm going to specifically talk about e-collars. So one example on this I can um, I can tell you is um, sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, one one example of this that I can tell you is um, this trainer that I knew years and years and years ago. Uh, they had dogs, um, Mallies, if I remember rightly. They um, 
they used to obviously go training, they had the dogs in the van with them, which is exactly what I do, uh, dogs would bark, um, and it was getting on their nerves, okay? So I'm not gonna say he or she, because I, I don't want this to go back to anybody. Um, so their method was e-collars, and um, what they did is they put a bark-activated electric collar on their Mali uh, that was in the back of their van. And um, what a bark-activated electric collar is, it's got a little sensor in the collar itself that um, will uh, sense when the dog barks, and it all then zap the dog. Now this e-collar was turned up to, you know, quite high to shut this Mali up. Um, <clears throat> one day, she, uh, she, um, she, I've just said she, oh well, she, um, she had this, uh, collar on her dog okay her dog was going absolutely ballistic in her van she was like uh, the battery must have run out so she ran to her van but this weren't normal barking okay this was this was like pain excruciating screaming barking really dog was really in distress she got to the van she opened the cage door she was trying to get the collar off the collar had malfunctioned and was constantly going off regardless if the dog was barking or not it was constantly going constantly going constantly going okay by the time she got the collar off the dog, the dog was in such a state that it was completely shut down and she was also put in the hospital because, let's be honest, it's a Mali. Um, so the Mali let her know that it wasn't very happy. Um, so electrical pro electrical goods, they, they, they're faulty. Okay, not they're not faulty, sorry. They can be faulty and they can go off in the wrong time. Again, this was a collar, it was a well-known brand. I'm not gonna say the brand, it wasn't dog this one, this was a different one. Um, so it's not nothing to do with cheap equipment. It's an electrical goods, so it's, things can go wrong. Okay, so this dog was zapped and zapped and zapped for nothing. Okay, and she completely ruined the dog's behavior and she ended up in hospital herself. Okay, um, second example. Again, another bark activated uh, collar, I, I believe. Okay, so it's an example of someone I know who um, shared a story about a dog um, who wears one, and when the dog wears it, it just stands there shivering. Now the dog is wearing it because of barking, because it runs around barking. So when the dog is wearing it, it stands there shivering. You take the dog, you take the collar off, the dog runs around barking again. So has the dog learned not to bark? No, the dog has learned that it's scary to have that collar on because when it barks, something happens. Okay, when it's wearing that collar, that's all it's learned. So it's not learned the behavior you don't want it to learn, it's just shutting up because you don't. You might as well tape the dog's mouth shut, okay? So if I told you, okay, do you know what? I'm gonna come around your house because you've got a dog that's barking, okay, probably a cockapoo, sorry. Uh, if I come around your house and I go to your cute little fluffy cockapoo, right, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go get some sellotape, sellotape the mouth shut. Now I know you thought about it, but you wouldn't actually do it because that's cruel, okay? Well, so is leaving your dog petrified all day with one of these collars on because it's scared that it's gonna get zapped. To me, that's cruel, okay? Um, and last and last but not least is, is one of these things that it's uh, impulse control. Uh, so trying to stop your dog from doing something you don't want them to do that they really wanna do. So it might be something simple like going and nick somebody's ball, or it could be, I'm gonna go and kill that sheep, okay? Something along those lines. But let's focus on the sheep uh, and the prey drive side of things because it is a it is a tough subject. It's really really difficult. Okay, so um, if you've got a dog that's got high prey drive, it's one of the most infuriating things when you're trying to stop your dog from doing something um, like try and chase a, a sheep or something like that. Um, and an e collar might be <clears throat> might be a way of doing it. And often. I do get told that the ban of this e-collar, which is apparently coming in, there are petitions to try and stop this ban, but the ban of the e-collars that's coming in is gonna to lead to dogs being put to sleep. And unfortunately, they are 100% right. 100% right. And the reason for that is back to the brainwashing thing, okay? Because people believe that there is no other option than to use an e-collar, okay? To stop sheep chasing. Um, well, there is. Keep your dog on a bloody lead, for a start. Now, now that goes back to what if my dog's pulling the lead, isn't that cruel? Yes, but it will stop your dog from getting his head blown off. At the end of the day, if the e-collar uh, ban comes into it, you ain't allowed it. Um, simple as that, you're not allowed to wear them. And it does come with fines and things like that. So keep your dog on the lead, put a muzzle on it, okay? While you're trying to do the training. So safety first. Now, not all dogs can be trained. Okay, in certain respects, all dogs can be trained, but if you've got a, a behavior that's so ingrained into the dog, sometimes you can't train it out of the dog. Okay, so if you've got a dog, so let's say a lurcher and it's chasing hares, okay, it's quite a typical problem. 
okay? That's what they're bred to do. That's what they do. They chase things, okay? To try and stop one is going to be quite difficult. Um, so an e-collar on it might stop it. It might not. It really depends on the dog and how it's trained. Uh, however, I would rather just put a muzzle on the dog, uh, put it on lead, and then try it and work through various ways. Notice I said various. Various ways of training your dog to ignore the hairs, don't chase the hairs, and things like that. This could be recall training, but with a view of creating uh, an obsession with recall, okay? So um, there's gonna be a recall video coming up actually soon, uh, which will explain a little bit about that. Um, so create an obsession with recall, uh, create an obsession with you, um, when out on walks. Now, obsession is, is a word that I tend to use um, that people go, oh, I don't want to be obsessed. It's not that kind of obsession. Um, you know, they're not going to stand outside your window rubbing their legs looking at you. Um, it's a bit weird, wasn't it? Um, so, uh, yeah, so you want to tra train uh, redu reduction behaviours, okay, to try and get your dog focused back on you, uh, ignoring behaviours. Okay, you want your dog to be looking at my guy, I'm not looking at her hair. You can do that. Um, you can even do scent discrimination, scent discrimination or, or scent Set association, so uh, even the smell of a hair will make the dog look at you. Things like that. There's so much you can do. And if you if you if you've studied dog behaviour as a trainer, if you've studied dog behaviour and you've gone down the science route, that will give you extra uh, extra little point pointers. Now there are some top top dog trainers in this country, um, uh, quite well known ones that would never have used an e collar before, but now they've been shown a way that it's not so cruel. They're going down that route. Um, and they're very anti-science. Now, I'm not anti-science um, when it comes to training. I think uh, people that promote science-based methods can be a bit over the top with it, and it's a very, very confusing. You don't, I don't think you need to know that much detail, but you do need to know chemicals. You do need to know how dogs uh, function, their brains, their nose, and everything in between, um, hearing, eyesight, because you can create certain stimulus in order to get the dog to do what you want by exploiting these these uh, chemical reactions and, and 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 things like that so you do need to have some science-based knowledge rather than just the physical otherwise there's there's a big difference between a trainer and a behaviorist as we can argue about at a later day okay guys so anyway i've probably bored you enough so again i am anti e-collar and I know how to use them it's just that i know other methods um, and trust me i have trained a lurcher not to chase a hare and I've trained a dog that's been trying to kill sheep, not to kill sheep. And I haven't used an e-collar for it. Okay, guys. So let's not row on this. Let's not argue on this. It's going to turn into an argument. So um, good luck with everybody. Uh, I'm going to try and stay out of it a little bit because uh, I think I do enough argument, arguing as it is. I say that, but you know damn well I'm going to end up arguing with somebody on it. But let's try, let's try and talk to each other. Let's try and put each other's ideas across. We can agree to disagree. That's what being an adult is about. Okay, guys, so I don't use them. I won't promote them. I don't like them. I'm never going to use them. Um, but you can make your own mind up on that. Okay, guys, so that's my super serious uh, video on e-collars.